In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the two worn KJetronic airflow meters that I have with the red project car. Just to get a baseline, this is what my fantastic blue black W124 looks like. This is measuring resistance between the top two pins of the airflow meter potentiometer. Notice the smooth transition of resistance based on where you are moving the airflow flap. It should gradually rise up to the two-thirds position and then lower again. Now let's have a look at the two extremely worn units that came with the red car. This is the one that was fitted to the engine. Beyond the off position and in the running uh, area where it would spend most of its life, it's actually not too bad. But it probably has a lot of starts on it because at the very beginning it is absolutely atrocious. However, it did run the car. What you don't want to see is the resistance jumping around or getting absolutely ridiculous figures like we're getting here at the very beginning of the uh, sweep of movement. For comparison, this is the one that came in the boot, or trunk as the Americans would call it, with the car. Presumably this is the one the car originally came from the factory with. Notice these absolutely ridiculous resistance figures we're getting around the idle position where the car is going to spend most of its life, just ambling along, keeping up in traffic. This engine would have run terribly, if at all, with this airflow meter. There would have been extreme surging, idle problems, you name it, it would have it. This is completely unacceptable. Note that when it's beyond the uh, worn range, it's quite acceptable, but we're not driving around with our foots flat to the floor all the time. Uh, well, some people may, but I don't. So where you want to drive, nice and casual, this would have been terrible. To visualise what the engine computer would see with these airflow meters, I have rigged up the scope and a temporary power supply to these airflow meters. Note this uh, ridiculous waveform you're seeing here. It's like a scratchy volume pot on an old amplifier. Note the uh, Operation is smooth beyond the uh, idle area or where you'd be driving most of the time. The engine, computer, ECU would not know what the hell to do with this kind of signal. For comparison, this is the one that was fitted to the car and it did run the engine. Um, it is most atrocious of all, um, just off the uh, off position. 
and that's not really such a big deal. It's quite okay in the uh, running area and the idle position. However, this airflow meter is also a piece of junk because it doesn't move very smoothly anyway. I'm going to have to make one out of the two. Um, this probably is all gummed up inside, but I'm not sure I'm going to use either of them at this stage. I certainly will be getting new potentiometers regardless. So I'm not going to put junk like this on my freshly rebuilt engine. Now I'm going to take off the potentiometer of the most worn unit just to show you what the wear looks like. I do not recommend removing these if you don't know what you're doing. The calibration is extremely sensitive. If you have not removed one of these before, probably not aware of what a pain in the backside it is to remove these covers. You need an extremely fine screwdriver and even then it's a bit of a battle because the covers just keep popping back in. But you get it eventually. And it can be even harder, obviously, when this is on the car, particularly on some V8s where this is buried right in the middle there and you don't have a great deal of access. On this six cylinder, it's not too bad. It's pointing towards the front of the car and you have reasonable access when the air filter is off. Once the two black plastic covers are off, it's just a case of removing these four uh, screws. I believe they're called Torx head. Um, I just have uh, a security screwdriver set that has this in it, so I didn't have to buy anything to access this. Once those screws are removed, it's a case of just pulling the potentiometer off the airflow meter housing. And it will become immediately apparent what the problem is. You can see these uh, black tracks where the two fingers inside the airflow meter run. You can see the extremely worn section on the right hand side. That is the problem. Because you've got metal rubbing on this ceramic circuit board, eventually wear and tear happens and that's how they fail. The new one is a solid black track you don't have these kinds of holes. For comparison this is the unit that came off my blue black 124 when I first got it I changed it over and this is 180,000 kilometers worth of wear. The other one is obviously original to the red car with God knows how many kilometers. It's currently 307,000, um, but I don't know when it was changed over, presumably by the previous owner when he was troubleshooting the running and starting issues. I'm not sure that that would have really saved the uh, engine uh, or started it, I should say because uh, it was also a piece of crap as well. On a side note, when replacing this potentiometer, these fingers should be carefully cleaned in a manner that doesn't bend them whatsoever, because if you bend them, this unit isn't going to work very well at all. Um, there is bits of crap stuck on the end of those, and that needs to go. 